So I wanted to film a little waverism tutorial. I have never done an in-depth tutorial on how to do um, my signature style, which is called waverism. Um, but I wanted to do one for you all because it's it might look complicated, but it's actually super simple um, once you get used to it. And I almost find it easier. Well, I definitely find it easier um, than painting in any other way now. Um, so I wanted to take you through how I do it and basically there's there's two different ways that I paint with waverism and I will talk through both and I feel like the best paintings I've done are when I mix two techniques in the same painting so like do two separate techniques but in the same painting and I will explain all. So the first technique is when I am doing someone's skin so this is when their like face is out of the water or their body is out of the water and you can really see like the detail of their skin and their skin is not being, I guess the texture of their skin and the light on their skin isn't being disrupted by like being in the water if you see what I mean, like it's all out of the water and so their skin is just as if light shining on it. And the second is when I'm painting water and so I want a kind of like shimmery, more fluid effect. And I'll also use that to like show any skin that's underwater. I'll mix in that technique a little bit. So you can tell that like that piece of skin is underneath the water. So starting with the bit out of the water, because this is what I always start with in my pieces. I, I will bring you a little closer. So when it's out of the water, literally all I will do is I will make sure that my brush strokes are really kind of precise and neat. Like you can see in this corner that like this bit here, I can go over because I think this bit's basically dry now. This bit here is just one unique brush stroke and it's really differentiated from the one next to it. So the way that I do that is I get my palette. I've already painted this, but you'll, you'll pick up the paint that you want to paint with and apply it and then for the next brush stroke you want to make sure that you're using a completely different colour number one and also that it's just completely differentiated so you want that nice sharp line between the two colours and really all I'm doing here is doing that I also don't pre-plan um I guess what the how the brush strokes are going to delay because for me that's one of the most interesting bits and like really I guess mentally stimulates me if you want to use that term um or if I want to use that term when I paint is having that kind of creativity and that opportunity to decide with this next brush stroke which way is it going to go how is it going to form I do always follow you can see that I'm always following like the contours like you can see the shoulder blade here I'm following that hollow of the con hollow of the shoulder blade with the darker colours, but also the shape of your shoulder blade with the brush strokes that I'm making as well. And like this is like pulling the brush strokes in the direction that the skin would naturally be like forming and the shadows would be forming. That is one kind of way that I make um my waverism style work is doing those really clear differentiated crisp lines um, in my paintings. To get them really nice and smooth and up against each other, I do use a tiny bit of refined linseed oil um, and I use much more refined linseed oil in the next step, but I'll show you that in a sec. But yeah, that's one thing is when the skin is out of the water or if you just want to use this kind of like crispness, then I always do this technique and um, I always start with this because I find this more fiddly than the other technique that I'm going to talk you through in a second. Okay, and then I'm going to use my honeydew piece just to explain what I mean by the differentiation differentiation in techniques. So here you can tell her face and her hair is all out of the water here. So I'm using those really clear, crisp brush strokes that are all differentiated. Whereas here, when you can see that her shoulder is is going underwater, I start to kind of like make the brush strokes a little bit messier I guess or like they blend into each other so you can see that this isn't like super crisp this wave 
as much as these up here. And that's just, to me, that shows the kind of like refraction of light in the water. And then you can see as it gets like more blurry and undefined, like the further it is under the water, the more I'm kind of mixing the brush strokes in. And I love, when I get to the stage of the painting where it's like this kind of brush stroke, I love it because I feel like it's super freeing. But I just wanted to show you that so that you can understand like the kind of difference um, between those two types of painting. Now I'm going to give you a little tutorial of how I actually paint. So I'm using, you can see I've already been using this paintbrush, so it's the Masterstroke Pro Art. I'm using size six and I've got my palette already. I've been painting already so you can just see how I mix. I just tend to like layer colours over the top of each other rather than starting from scratch. Um, so I'll just like think, oh, it's similar to that colour and I'll just like add a bit more white, I'll add a bit more yellow. But you can see that along here, there's quite a harsh differentiation at the moment between like the darkness down here and the lighter colours here. So literally, all I do if I just mix a colour, so you can see here I've got a colour mixed and I'll just swipe my brush over like that and then I always twist my brush so that I don't have like excess further down the brush because I feel like that makes it really, I don't know, hard to work with. You want all of the paint to be right at the tip of your brush like that. And then I'll just find somewhere that I want to put it. So I'm just gonna go over here. I hope that I'm not gonna block this out because I'm right-handed. And then I'll just kind of go with the flow of wherever the brush stroke wants to take me. And if it's not fully filled in, then I'll go back with the same colour and just make sure that it's all properly filled in. And you just carry on working like that. Like next, I'll take a slightly different colour and if I feel like this colour is too tacky, literally I've just got a tiny bit of refined linseed oil in this cap and I'll just dip my paintbrush in it and then put that to the side. It's kind of gross, you know, that linseed oil and then it just like really loosens up the paint so I'll just do that again with a slightly separate colour and then I'll just decide where to put this one but always in nice soft soft lines and this is the bit that I love the most about doing paintings is when you get to this final step and this is just a bit more free-flowing and by the time I've got to this point I'm like whew another painting down and you can see that sometimes I'll I'll start with like dark colors I'll either use two paint brushes and do one with light paint colors and one with dark paint colors or you can just do what I've done and kind of set out most of the light colors um, and then you can add in the dark colors afterwards just so that you're not having to constantly clean your brush of being like dark and then light um, so yeah if you do have two paint brushes that does help or you can just paint it in first and you will have to end up going back in with a lighter colour. But um, yeah, and then it's honestly, you just build it up like that. This bit is the kind of chill, more chill bit to do. And I find with the water as well, you can go, you can go a bit crazy on the colours, but I kind of like to keep it a bit more muted in the background just because, oh, that's not true. My golden hour piece was not muted. But it depends on the piece. I think for this, because I knew that the skin is really the centerpiece, like the back is the centerpiece, I kind of want to keep the um, background as more like toned down so that you're not distracted by it. But yeah, that's essentially all I do. Um, it's super easy. I actually find it's much easier than blending um, colours. So have a go. If you have any questions, then you can obviously drop me a DM um, or drop me an email. Uh, but yeah, I just carry on uh, building it up. I'll put in a like time lapse photo of me doing this so you can see how it looks on some of my other pieces that I've done. Um, and yeah, super excited. Please try it and see how you get on.